So number 11 then from the specimen paper for the advanced tire. Here we go, it's a definite integral. Seven marks, you have to find its exact value. Well, as soon as you see that factorised denominator, you know it's going to split into loads of logs. Well, possibly some other expressions as well, because I've got a squared term underneath. That won't be a log. But if that's going to be the case, the first step will be use partial fractions to split it apart. So, just borrowing the integrand here, the part which is being integrated, I'm going to write, I can rewrite this portion as a over this linear one, x plus one, plus b over, and then it's repeated, so I'll put it down again, x plus one squared, plus c over the other linear factor in the denominator, two x minus one. Just writing that out gets you the first mark. So what does that produce then? If you multiply throughout by this denominator, that'll knock all the denominators out, and that will give me a times, well, I've used up one of them here already, so I just need one more of those, and the 2x minus 1. The b's got both of these, so it just needs the 2x minus 1. And the c's got the 2x minus 1, so it needs both of those parts, the squared part. And all of that will come to, when that's gone, x plus 4. That's not worth a mark. The next three marks are for finding a, b, and c. In fact, the next four marks are for finding a, b, and c, and just putting it all together. So, knockout values, because I've got these linear terms that can get knocked out. If you use x equals negative 1, that will disappear, and that will disappear, and you'll be left with negative 3b is negative 1 plus 4 is 3, which means b equals negative 1. So, that's worth a mark. Another one that can get knocked out is by choosing x equals a half. At x equals a half, that disappears, and that disappears. Be left with an awkward little number here for this one, because that's going to be one and a half. That's going to be one and a half squared. So that's going to be nine upon four. C is equal to four and a half is nine upon two. Not as bad as it looked initially, because that's just double that, so C is equal to two. That's worth a mark. Now, there's no more knockout values, so the next thing you could do is, well, one technique is what's called poke it with a stick and see what happens. Put some other number in, like x equals zero, whatever. However, a more sophisticated technique, I would suggest, would be just to compare both sides. Because whatever the x squared term on this side is, it should equal the x squared term on that side and so on. So if I just do that, if I just compare the x squared terms, on this side, I've got... For x squared, I've got two lots of a. So 2a, and that's got none, and that's got 1. 2a plus c should equal 0. You know c is 2. So that means I've got 2a equals negative 2, or a equals negative 1, and that's the third mark. Now it's just a case of put it all together. So if I put them in this order, I'm going to have a negative and a negative. I think I'll start with the C term first. So it's 2 over the 2x minus 1. And then it's minus, now I'll go back to my A, which was a minus 1 over x plus 1. And B was also a minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. So looking at that, I've got log, log, and that's just a power term. Power negative 2, so go back up to power negative 1. But... Just writing that gives you the fifth mark. Now I just need to do this part then. So that part is just a log because we've got a linear denominator. It's not just x, it's underneath. So it's a function of a function. It's a composition of functions I've got here. But it's linear. It's a, what's called a linear composition. So that would just go back to ln of 2x minus 1. But divide by the derivative of the inner function, which is just linear, of course, so that's just divide by the 2. It was being multiplied by 2, so dividing by 2 just makes that one of those. That part, again, it's a linear composition there of a log, but the derivative's just 1, so it's just going to be divide by 1, so it'll just be minus ln of x plus 1. And that, you could rewrite it as power negative 2 if you like, but you can see what's happening. Negative 2 will go back up to negative 1. 
You're going to be dividing by that new power, dividing by negative 1, so it'll turn into a plus. So that's what you're left with. 1 over x plus 1. It was power 2 below, so it rises to power 1 below. But divide by that power 1 below, divide by negative 1. That goes from 1 to 2. And the next mark is for integrating all three terms. You should really, you don't know what the values of x are here, you should really be putting in the safety blanket around these little these little operands that the log is operating on because you can't be feeding that anything negative or zero. Although the Martin scheme did say don't penalise it, but I think you should assume that it could be penalised. So modulus, absolute value. Right, now it's just a case of evaluating that. So now you've got to decide Will I put my logs together before I evaluate, or will I put my logs together after I evaluate? Oh, I think I'll just leave them the way that they are. So putting a 2 into this. 2 twos are 4, that's log 3. So I can just write that as log 3, that's not negative. Minus log n, 2 and 1 is 3. Oh. So that's a log 3. Plus, and again, you've got 2 and 1 is 3. But that's plus 1 over 3. From that, I'm going to subtract now, putting 1 in. So 2 times 1, take away 1, is log 1. Minus, this part is log 2. And that part is 1 and 1 is 2, plus a half. So there's no marks yet, because there's only the one mark left. Now, log n1 is just equal to 0. They cancel. So I've only got a log term and a pair of fractions that can go together. So that log term, subtract a negative, is going to be ln2. And the other part will be a third, take away a half. And a third, take away a half, means that you're left with, because a half's bigger than a third, minus a sixth. And that's the last mark.